um, Luke chapter 4 and reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 18. We've been talking to you about um, trouble. And, um, and that's that agitation that is caused in the inward commotion. Can we just turn this down a little bit over here? Thank you. Inward commotion to take away calmness of mind. Right. Anybody know what trouble is all about? That's right, brother. One minute you can be walking and you and the next minute trouble. Ah. Ah. And um, you're in trouble. That's right. And Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 33, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Thank you, Adam. Peace. 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 So that we may have peace. That's right. In this world, you will have trouble. <laughs> trouble. Right. Right. Don't fool yourself. You will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Now we've been looking at different kinds of trouble. We've been looking at the, the trouble of eyesight. We've been, we looked at the trouble of a broken heart. Um, and Jesus mentions all of them. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, um, to proclaim liberty for captives, recovery of sight for the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed. And this morning, I want to look at to proclaim liberty for the captives. Proclaiming liberty for captives. It was a Tuesday evening. Um, I was here yeah, at Alpha, it was April month, Alpha came to an end at about half past nine. I pulled into my streets, Marach Crescent, only to come near my home and there were blue lights and police vans and every um, district watch and every neighborhood watch vehicle was in my street. And here I drive into this. I've just finished Alpha. My garage door is standing wide open. Apparently I had forgotten to close it. An old age problem. And I found out, I said, hey, what's going on over here? And then the story began to unfold. My neighbor, just before, you know, about half past seven, had gone to the spa in his little spider BMW, um, came back and uh, parked his car and went into the house and he had about eight o'clock, there was a ding dong, ding dong. And when he went to go and answer the call, the next minute there was a gun in his face. And um, his son, his wife, and the three of them were held up in their home. They were put into the bathroom, locked up over there. And you know what? They left their cell phones with them. They took the cell phones, they took everything, they locked them up over there. And then they started cleaning out the house as best they can, not taking everything, but all the TVs, all the jewelry, all the cell phones, everything that they could fit into the car, that they'd come in there, and the little BMW, the sports one, they folded up, and they rode away. And it was a couple of minutes later, after they had left, after being threatened, um, that they managed to get out of the house and ran across to a neighbor. And that's when the blue lights and the police arrived and everybody else. 
um, arrived and I just came there about 10, 15 minutes later. I want to ask you a question this morning. Um, have you been holed up? Have you ever been locked up? Have you ever been in captivity? Put in a prison. I, I'm not talking about Goodwood. I'm not talking about Rockenstein. I'm talking about sometimes at your place of work. Um, it could be, you know, your own home. Locked up. You feel like um, you're not free to do what you want to do. It. And um, there you sit. You're stuck in a marriage, stuck in a relationship, stuck at work. And the enemy is coming along and he is plundering all of God's blessings. There are things that you've been blessed with in life that God has touched your heart with. He's ministered to you and you know about God's blessing. But now you're sitting there locked up and the enemy is just coming along and you can hear the car starting up and it's just driving away with all of your blessings. And instead of being blessed, you say, I've been taken captive. I'm a prisoner. There's one kind of captivity I want to speak to you this morning about that I feel God has laid upon my heart this morning. It's one that I struggle with and I'm sure you do as well. We get locked up in the natural. What do I mean by being locked up in the natural? I'm talking about the law. I'm talking about the mundane. I'm talking about the regular, typical, the usual. In other words, we get locked up to, hey, we go to bed at night, we get up and we do this, and we go to work, we drive over here, and you know what, we go to church on a Sunday, we do this, we believe things. But you know what, we are locked up in the natural. We are locked up in the mundane things of life. And I get to see this quite often when I go along and I visit retired people, I visit an old, an old age homes. And you walk in over there and the simple things of life they get upset about because they locked up. Right. And you know what I get to meet and I, and I struggle with this thing. The natural, always just seeing things naturally, hearing the natural things that other people are saying to me on the news. But I want to tell you today, the Holy Spirit of Jesus says the anointing of God is on me to come and set the captives free. Hallelujah. You might say, hey, I grew up in this kind of family. My father was like this. My mother was like this. Well, now I'm just typically being like them. That's a jail, man. And God needs to set you free from it. We sang a song a little early on and I asked them to sing it for us. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. He calls me friend. Now I just want you to imagine just for a second being a friend of Jesus. Imagine just for a second, just go, come on, let, I, I want you to come with me. Get into oh John, the disciple, get into his shoes, Matthew. Um, get get into Mary's shoes, the mother of Jesus. You know, just 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 find yourself around Jesus for a little while, you know. Come and come with me to a visit to his home. Um, come and have a meal with him. Come and spend time with him. Can you imagine Jesus um, waking up in the mornings and, you know, hey, he's disappeared. He's gone to go and pray. And, and uh, you know, so Andrew gets up, one of the disciples, and he goes to the other disciples and, and he says, hey, come guys, um, we need to go find Jesus. 
And you know what they say, oh, well, other guys sleeping around over there, and they all say to one another, Amen. And I'm going to hang out with Jesus today. It's getting a bit rough. Um, you know, I, I've got better things to do today than hang out with Jesus. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, the latest movie has come on, and, uh, and you know, I need to go see Barbie. And, and, and John, John turns to Peter, and, and, and Peter says, Hey, you know what? Liverpool are playing against Manchester United this afternoon. Uh, maybe we can just skip Jesus today. Uh, do you think a conversation like that ever happened? I somehow helped it. Can you imagine the disciples being all on their own for a little part and the one starts talking to the other one and said, oh, you know, this Jesus teaching is so boring. I've heard it all before. In actual fact, guys, I want to invite you. I was at the temple the other day and, and you know what? There was a priest over there and this oak was teaching. I did he he'll put Jesus to sleep. This oak knows how to raise his voice. He's got record lights and you know what? He does song and dance as well. And you know what? It was so entertaining. Um, guys, Maybe we skip Jesus this afternoon. He said we must go on a boat on a trip over there. And you know, Jesus and boats don't go together. Um, maybe we must go listen to this priest. Hi, hey, come on, haven't you heard it all before? You know what? Um, we sit over here day after day walking with Jesus. And it is so boring. Do you think any of those disciples would speak that way? No. Do you think that they would talk about Jesus and, and just say, you know, Jesus is pretty normal? Would they say that Jesus is mundane, he's just regular like all the other teachers? Do you think they would say he's typical? Do you think that they would say he's usual? When I read my Bible, I read that these disciples, sometimes they were so tired, they couldn't stay awake. I, I, when I begin to read my Bible, these disciples never knew what was going to happen that day. When they get into a boat and a storm happens, they never expected the storm to be calm. Peter goes fishing and he's fishing and he's fishing and he's fishing and the next minute Jesus walks up to him on the edge of the and he says to him, Peter, just throw your nets on the other side of the boat and the next minute the nets are busy breaking. They didn't know what was going to happen during the day. They didn't know the healings that were going to happen. They didn't know they would be walking down past the village and there they would, you know, Jesus was hungry, a normal thing, but then they would find him later on talking to a Samaritan woman. And the next minute they start listening to this conversation and believe me, it ain't no boring conversation. And the next minute they do something that they had never ever done before. As Jews they go into a Samaritan village. Mm. It's night time and, and you know what, the next minute there's a, there's a man over here but, but you know what, he's got a hoodie on and, he's a, and when they get to see who it is, they say, hey, this is one of the main mana from the religious organization in Jerusalem and he's busy speaking to Jesus. His name is Nicodemus. Boy, you want to tell me that conversation was, mm, I think let's go to sleep. I want to go watch Man United. Um, well, you know what? I've got better things to do. No, I want to tell you there was action. They never knew when they got up in the morning, they would go walking down the road and the next minute a 
person with sickness would come with leprosy and the person would leave healed and they'd go, we're here. You know, just another day. Um, I wonder what my wife's cooking tonight for supper. They never knew when they got up in the morning um, and they spent the day with Jesus, demons would be running away because the power of God. They didn't know what kind of teaching that they would, would be happening, what kind of incidents would be happening, and how Jesus would handle it. Man, I want to tell you now, there's no ways that you would say to me, I am a friend of God and he's so boring. And you know what? I'm working for another friend. Come tell Abraham that. Man, that man thought that his life was coming to an end. He had no other children. And the next minute, at the age of a hundred, little Isaac was born. Hallelujah. Why? Because when you're a friend of God, I want to tell you now, God takes you out of the boring, out of the mundane, God takes you out of the topical, God takes you out of the natural, and He introduces you to the supernatural. Amen. God's world is natural. But I want to tell you, God's supernatural to us, it's supernatural, but to Him, it is very, very normal. It's miraculous. It's astonishing. You know what you go on and go, what can I do here? Your eyes pop as you go, wow! Can you imagine? You, you, you just go for a little trip, three of you, up a mountain. You get to the top of the mountain, and the next minute, a cloud covers it. And the next minute, here's the Jesus that you know, the physical man, the natural man. The next minute, he is glowing. And the next minute, here comes Moses. And you go, huh? Can, can we build a house for you, Alex? They get to see a Jesus that is marvelous, that is wonderful, that is extraordinary. And I want to say to you this morning, I'm speaking to you this morning, the Holy Spirit came to set you free from the prison, from the prison of the natural, from the prison of the normal, the Monday, the regular, the typical, the usual. You might say to me, hey, well, my Monday, my usual is, okay, I get to this age, I retire, and then I do this, and then I get sick, and then I go to the hospital, and then I do this, and that's the Monday. You might say, well, you know what, my family was like that, that's the way I'm going to be. Well, you don't know. When you get out of that prison, what God intends for your life, yeah. He's a God of the supernatural. You might step into at your work, and it might be a natural work. But you know what? When you put your work under the Lordship of Jesus, the supernatural comes along. You might stand in front of a class to teach children and in the natural you are teaching them. But when you put your teaching ability under His supernatural ability, it becomes a place where God begins to act supernaturally. And I want to say to you this morning, God forgive me, I've been too natural. I've been too mundane. We've been looking at our world through our eyes and not through the Spirit of God. Yeah. And we land up in a prison. Well, I've just come to church. I'm going to listen to a mundane sermon. I'm going to do a mundane thing, come to the communion table, and then I'm going to walk out of church, and I'm going to have a mundane meal with my family, and then I'm going to do this, and then Monday morning's coming, I'm going to get up at this time, and I'm going to go to work, I'm going to do this. It's all normal. It's all usual. Ah, oh, sir. No, sir. When you begin to invite God into your usual, 
When you invite God into your humanness, when you invite God into your typical, when you allow God to come and visit as a friend, I want to tell you as a friend, if he doesn't rub off on you, then you've got the wrong friend, because that friend is marvelous. That friend, that friend is miraculous. That friend that you fight along, he is super abundantly gracious and miraculous. And he wants to get you out of your little prison. And he wants you to get you to come and come and walk with me. Hey, I've got some appointments. Well, have you got an appointment with me? Come on. Do you know what I'm talking about this morning? Spot on, brother. I want to tell you now, you can never say it. And when you start walking with God, when you've been walking with Him, you're going to say He's miraculous. You can never be mundane being a friend of God, a supernatural God. I'm sorry, you can't. You can never be a typical doing family person when you're doing family with an extraordinary, marvelous Father God. Moms, you can't be just a natural mother. Hallelujah. When the Spirit of God touches you, you become a supernatural mother. That's right. Amen. Oh God, I, sometimes I walk into church, sometimes I look at people and I look at them in the natural and, and I don't say, hey God, what do you want me to do? And sometimes I, I look at myself and I think, what can I do? How can I? And you know what? It's not me, it's what God can do. Jesus. He is a miracle working God. Oh he did miracles back then, he still does miracles today. He still touches hearts today. That person's heart might be cold. That person's heart might be far from God. But you know what? When God touches that heart, it becomes a miracle heart and it begins to serve God. The prison door gets opened. Some of you have been sitting in church for long. You say, hey, well, I put my faith in trust in God. I've been baptized. I've done all of those things. But you become a natural person. And you locked in and throw the key away. I know it all. And your God has become so boring that the world starts looking good. That's right. I want to say to you this morning, there's not something wrong with God, there's something wrong with you. You need the Spirit of God to touch your heart. You need to be set free from that prison. And you need to start walking in the supernatural power, grace, love of God. I want to draw your attention this morning to one very normal, one very regular mundane event that proved to be the most extraordinary event that this world has ever witnessed. You know, in the, uh, in the movie world, they always try to outdo one another. You know, the more they spend on money, the more there is, uh, and, and, and you know what, the more they can produce. Whether it's poems, whether it's singing, um, they do a whole lot of stuff to, ah, you got shot, did you see that? Nice. The, the technical world, the, they always trying to outdo one another. But I want to tell you this morning about one event that happened on this earth that will never, ever, ever, ever be outdone. There was an event that happened that will never, ever be surpassed. There will never ever be anything like that ever happening again. 
And yet it was a very natural event. It was a common thing. It was a normal thing. In Jesus' day, crucifixion was very normal. Around 4 BC, when Jesus was born somewhere around there, one Roman general, Varus, crucified over 2,000 Jews. And believe me, it wasn't all one at a time. So, you know what? It was a normal thing to, you know, you go, okay, now I'm just leaving my house, I'm going shopping, I'm quickly going to go buy some stuff. Oh, check down the hill. There's a, you know, there's a couple of crosses. The Romans are busy crucifying. And if that was Jerusalem, if you went to other places, um, if you went to Rome, um, you might find, uh, you know, the slave, uh, the slave had got angry with his master and uh, killed his master. And you know what the Roman law said? The Roman law said that not only the slave that did the killing, but his whole family would be crucified. And so you know what, it wasn't like, uh, ah! you know, um, Jerusalem times. Um, we had a, 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 a crucifixion this morning and, 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 you know, and everybody, the whole, comes to the no, it was like, oh, hey guys, there was a crucifixion this morning. That's a different thing if it's a person that you knew, but you know what, it was a very normal thing. Taking a bowl, Putting it in the ground, cupping the person, pong, pong, pong through the and then putting them over there and just leaving them naked. Walk away. It was very normal. And so on this particular day, there was another normal crucifixion. Two criminals. Then there was another verse. Jesus. <laughs> oh, bless you, Jesus. Come on. <laughs> Last year, how, how many of you tuned into the, the TV to watch whose funeral? The Queen. No, no, the Queen Elizabeth. On. We, we, we all watch the queens, you know, all over the cart and going down the street and, you know, we saw that. It was like publicized, there, there billions of people all over the globe sat and watched the because of who had died. I want to tell you now there was something special about the third person on that cross. He was God in the flesh. Hallelujah. He was the Son of God. There was nothing normal about him. Oh, in heaven, he was the King of Kings. He was the Lord of Lords. And brother, when they were taking him and putting them on that cross, those Romans, those Jews, were busy nailing him. They didn't know who they were putting. They thought this is just another crucifixion. Except the captain. He said, this was the Son of God. Some things were happening. There was dark. There was earthquakes. Things were happening around that said, "No, something, something unique is happening." But if you were in Jerusalem, you would just go and say, "Oh, okay, there's another. Can, can I please have some bread, please, over there?" And you would do your normal shopping. It was something mundane, but yet it wasn't. I want to say to you, he's. Mission was astonishing. Come on, how many of our cars are geared to avoid an accident 
we in our mind, if I've got to say to you, hey, you're leaving church, you're going to the circle over here, you're going to have an accident over there. You go, no, 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 I'm not going there. If I've got to tell you there's a cross waiting for you, there, there's something going to happen, you're going to do everything in your power to avoid it. My Bible teaches me that Jesus said he's face like stone, like flint, to get to Jerusalem and that he wasn't going to go, oh, I to go visit some people there. No, he was going to the cross. And he knew that on that Easter, a cross was facing him. And he set his face towards Jerusalem to get there. Boy, if I knew a cross was facing me, I'd, hey, where's, where's the next bus to Egypt? Uh, I want to get away. No, sir. This man was on a mission. He didn't come to come and heal people. He didn't come to come and you know, feed some people and to do this and that. No, he came to this world. He was born to die. He came into this world to go to the cross. And he set his face towards it. It was his mission. I want to tell you that is unique. That is very different. What was his motive? Oh, well, you know what? Um, it was the political this and that. And, and you know what? They moved over there. No, it had nothing to do with that. It was the politics of heaven had spoken. It was God's love. And Jesus would say, For God so loved world. I want to tell you, the Bible says he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and to set him free. He could have done that, but you know what? That was the first thing from his heart. It was a love for you. Amen. Lord. A sinner. Me. It was love for those people that he was surrounded across, those Romans, those Jews, those disciples. It was the love for them. That was his motive. It was love that nailed him to that cross. I want to say to you that that cross was miraculous. That the king of life, the creator of the universe, that spoke things into being, should humble himself and die. Hallelujah. But that's not the end of the story. That's only the beginning. That, you like. that was Friday. Saturday, it was normal. But on Sunday morning, it was at It was miraculous. There was an earthquake and an angel of the Lord came and descended from heaven and there was a shaking and that stone rolled away and Jesus came out from the dead. He who lives forevermore. I want to tell you now, can you imagine the disciples well, you know, it's Saturday off, oh, this is pretty normal. There's another good leader down the train, and we're going back to normal. We're going back to the typical way of life. We'll go to his grave, and, and we'll go and honor him. We'll honor his teaching. We will treat him like that, but he's dead. But all that they know that if they would walk into a tomb, and an angel would say to them, he is alive. I want to say to you this morning, the same Jesus who is alive, he said to his disciples, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said to them, I am with you. And I want to say to you, you might be living in that ordinary life, getting up, going to school, doing homework, doing this, doing that. Well, I want to say to you, when you start doing it with Jesus, extraordinary comes along. Miraculous comes along. You might look at your family and you might look at your circumstances and say, well, it's pretty normal. I want to say to you, it's not when you start doing it with Jesus. 
and you start doing it in the power of the cross. It's the cross. Listen to me, that ordinary event, believing in the power of the cross, committing your life to Christ. Jesus went to the cross. He died for our sins to take away our sins. Hey, but did I see that happening? No. It happened in heaven. My sins are forgiven. I want to tell you the day you come to this table, the day you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, a sinner becomes a saint. A saint. That's what my Bible teaches me. You don't want to tell me, oh, that's pretty ordinary, eh? Hey? Everybody knows me as sinner. They know all my sins. I know my sins as well. I know my typical. But God begins to look at me and says, Saint Paul. And it's not a title. It's a lifestyle. The day you took this cross and you became part of your life. You, you looked at what Jesus did. You put your faith and trust in Him. Listen, before that, you if you die, where do you go to? To hell! Please, brother, please. No heaven! I sat with a brother in my car driving with him. I said, what happens to people when they die? No, they all go to heaven. I said, well, if, if we all go to heaven, why did Jesus have to die? Right. If we were all going to heaven, no, he died so that you can go to heaven because sinners don't go to heaven. And there's only one way to heaven, and that's via Jesus Christ. And it's via the cross. And you see, the day I put my faith and trust in Jesus, the cross, I go from going to hell to going to heaven. Heaven! Yeah. A miracle! My destiny is changed. A ticket that I've handled, that I've handled all my life. What am I going to do when I die? What's happening then? I don't know it. Now, I know absent from the body is present with the Lord Jesus Christ. When Christ fell out of bed on that Monday morning, when he hit the deck within seconds, he was with Jesus. Hallelujah. Another marvelous thing, another miraculous thing happens. Jesus looked at some of those religious people and he says, No, your father's the devil. That's right. John they were Jewish people. And he said to them, No, your father's the devil. That's right. He was a liar. That's he was right. a cheat. You typically like him. You normally just like him. But he said to those that received him, to them gave him the power, the authority to become children of God. Listen, man, you leave one family and you join the family of God. My heavenly Father is my Father. My brothers and sisters are the children of God. I become part of the family of God. And listen, grandparents, you know what you think and feel about your children. Parents, you know what you think and feel about your children. Can you imagine what Father God feels about these children? A miracle happens. I start doing family. I start doing family with Father God. It's not a title, it's a relationship. In my mundane life, in my regular life, in the things that I do, you know what, I start doing family with Him. That's being set free from being a captive to the natural. What will I see, what will I feel? To, hey God, what do you think? What do you feel? What are you doing, God? The Bible says in Galatians 2 verse 20, Paul writes, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live, this mundane life I live 
I'm certain there was no mundane life. Eh, the life I live in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Man, oh man, when you have that kind of motive in your heart, you know what being in love means? When you fall in love with somebody, when, when I fell in love with the word of I, I, you know what, I, I would go to visit her and say, oh, what a pretty boring Monday visit. What are you smiling at? <laughs> I, I would go, hey, can't we watch some soccer? Um, you, you, you know, nay, brother. Midnight oil burnt. <laughs> I want to say to you, when you get to know Jesus, Jesus. and you begin to walk with Jesus, Jesus. something's changed. Right. You can't live a mundane, normal life. It's going to be challenging. Yeah. I want to challenge you this morning. Worship is enjoying the marvelous. Worship is enjoying the world. Come on. Um, you, you, if you hate soccer, you don't go, um, hey, I want to watch soccer, don't you? If you go to church and, and, and um, you know, ah, you just do the normal thing, uh, oh, we come into the table of the Lord and, hey, we must get out here now. When you realize the marvelousness, you can't wait just to take that grape juice and take that bread and just say, Lord, oh, thank you for your marvelousness. Thank you for what you've done in my life. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for making me your child. Thank you for, Lord, oh, I, I, I ain't typical anymore. I'm a child of God. Me and God, we going on a journey. And thank you this morning for inviting me out of my jail of natural into your marvelous prayer becomes, hey God, this is my normal, this is my Monday, this is the essence that I'm facing, this is the, what's going on. But Lord, come along with your miraculous. Come along, Lord, with your supernatural. Lord, I'm looking to you for the supernatural. Natural says it ain't going to happen. Natural says I'm going down. Natural says I'm going to die. I'm going to swim up. Natural says we are going under. But I'm coming to you this morning. I'm depending upon you because you're the lifter of you put my feet on the king's highway. I walk with you. Faith is expecting God. Come on, man. Imagine tomorrow morning when you get in the car, Lord. What are you and I going to do today? Whoever we going to meet. Hey, can, 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 Lord, I want to put it to you like this. Can we have some fun today? Can, can, can you come and surprise? And am I prepared to believe God for the impossible? Or am I always looking at doom and boom? Come on, it's time to get out of the jail. God wants to go with you. God wants to go where you go. God wants to live in your world, your natural world. That's why he came into this world. He was a person. He got hungry. He needed to sleep. He was a natural person, but he brought the supernatural with him. God wants you to live in the supernatural. Amen. He says, get out of this jail. Open up the door. Begin to look and see what God can do. Come and stand. I will be happy.
Here at Salem, one of our values is generosity. Whether that is serving in our community, helping others, and giving of our time and resources, we believe we can be generous because of who God is and what He has done for us. If you would like to be part of what Salem is doing in our community, here are some ways you can give.